In this video, I'm going to explain about checking crankshaft end float and for movement of the prop shaft in the clamp on a Porsche 928. This particular one is a 95 model, one of the last ones produced 928 GTS, but the same will apply to all models, particularly with an automatic transmission. Now, before I explain the process, I'm going to explain why this happens on these cars, and, uh, and then we'll go on to looking at the actual process itself. So to start off with the design of cars, with a lot of cars, which are front engine rear wheel drive, at the front of the car, you'll have the engine and the gearbox. And then at the rear of the car, you'll have a differential. And the drive from the front of the car to the rear will be taken through a prop shaft looking like this. So this end will go into the end of the gearbox. This end will go onto the differential through a rubber coupling. And the engine and the differential are mounted onto the chassis and they're not rigidly mounted together. Now this means that the engine and gearbox, the two heaviest components, are both at the front of the car, which means to get some space in the cabin, the engine and gearbox have to be mounted quite a long way forwards. Now what they did in the 928 is it's designed as what's called a transaxle, which means the transmission and the differential are combined in one unit, mounted at the rear of the car, and then the engine sits at the front. This has the advantage that the weight distribution is better and it means the engine can be moved further backwards in the chassis. So instead of being joined by a simple prop shaft, on these cars it's joined by what's called a torque tube, which is effectively rigidly bolting the engine and the transmission together, the tube up there, you can't easily see it. And then they're joined by a prop shaft, which is rigidly bolted at both ends using a clamp splines and a clamp so it effectively has a splines like this at both ends and a clamp which goes around it to stop it moving on the engine end it goes onto a flex plate like this um, and then at the other end it just goes directly in, into the transmission into the torque converter now the problem on these cars is that the prop shaft can move within the clamp now when it does that it puts force onto the end of the engine so I'll quickly explain the situation in the engine so we can see that. So this is a crankshaft out of an engine. It's not actually a 928 engine. This is out of a, a 911, but the principle is exactly the same. So these are the main bearings. So this is where the, the crankshaft will rotate on these. And then this is where the, the comrods will attach on here. Now there's two types of bearing inside the engine. These are the standard main bearings, so these just support the crankshaft up and down, provide lubrication through these holes on here. And then there's one special bearing, which is this one, which you'll see as well as having a bearing face on here, also has a bearing face on the side. And there'll be one section of the crankshaft, which in this case is this one, which you can see has a bearing face on here. So what this does, this controls what's called the end float on the crank. So basically this bearing will fit in here. It's not, it's not actually the right bearing for this, this crank. This is a GT3 bearing and it's a Carrera crank so they don't fit but you get the idea. So this goes in here and then there's a little bit of sideways movement. There has to be some sideways movement so everything can move. You can see where there's some wear on the end of that bearing. Now in the 928 engine the movement that's allowed on this is from 0.11 to 0.31 millimetres. Now with the prop shaft moving on the clamps, what happens is there is a, a constant load basically pushing on the end of the crank there, which means the crankshaft is being pushed against the bearing and it can cause wear. So the way that we measure this is we put a, a dial gauge, so basically a gauge like this up against the end of the flywheel then you'll see when that moves, we can measure the movement. So we're going to, we'll get to where the prop shaft is, the end of the prop shaft, and then we can put this on the end of the, on the end of the flywheel, basically put it on the end of the flex plate, and then we can move the crankshaft backwards and forwards and basically measure the clearance in there. If the clearance becomes too large, then these crank webs on here can hit against the block material inside the engine because there's very little clearance and it can basically ruin the engine um, so it's a vital thing to check so 
This check should ideally be done every year on the cars. Um, I've only just bought this car, it's the first time I'm checking it. So I shall go through the procedure. Apologies for the audio right at the beginning of the next section. Um, basically, first process, just get the car up in the air. There should be some underbody panels on it. On this particular car they're missing at the moment, so I won't be going through the section of removing those, but they just bolt on. You'll see there's various fixings for them. So just unbolt those. And then you'll see this cover here. So this is after I've actually done the process, so this is all cleaned up now. So the, the flex plate that I've shown you is under here. Then the prop shaft runs down to the end where you can see the torque converter in there. So the entire process involves getting to both ends of this, checking the bolts, making sure they're tight, checking for any movement, and measuring the end float in the crank. jacked up in the air. I've undone the three bolts on this exhaust flange here and the same on this side and I've also undone this secondary air injection connection here just by supporting this end with a spanner whilst loosening this end and then with the exhaust supported on a transmission jack I've just lowered it slightly. Basically it's got to be lowered enough to get those two bolts out there so in total there are six bolts, these two up here, then a further couple on each side. So I'm now going to go ahead, remove those bolts, and I should be able to get the cover off. With the cover removed, I could now reattach the exhaust manifolds, but since they're on the stand, I'll just leave them there. So now I can see the flex plate and the coupling. So what I have to do now is release this coupling here, and I'll mark this shaft first. So I'll, put, uh, I'll mark this with a scribe, and then when I release this, I can see if the shaft moves or not. The rear pinch bolt is situated just in front of the torque converter, which you can see here. So it's up above these heat shields, you can see I've put some penetrating oil on the bolts that hold the heat shield in place. So I've now got to remove those bolts, take the heat shield off. So there are bolts up there. There's also a bolt up there, bolt over this side, and there's one at the front somewhere. So I'm going to remove all of those, and then hopefully I can get the heat shields out of the way enough to get to where the pinch bolt is. With the heat shield removed, you can clearly see the head of the bolt. You may need to rotate the crankshaft to get it to that position. Um, I've removed the, the rubber bung that was on it, which you can see there. Now, I was going to change this bolt, but there's only one bolt available from my Porsche Centre at the moment. So I'm just going to concentrate on changing the front one, because this rear one can easily be changed at a later date. So for now, I've just checked the torque on it. So I've talked it up to the, to the correct specification. I've done that using this torque wrench here, which is a, a dial indicating torque wrench with a, a long extension on it. So now that that's done, I'm just going to double check the end float at the front, which I shall be using this pry bar to move the crank backwards and forwards. You can see the, the dial indicator set up. So now I'm just going to get behind the, the flywheel and just gently pry it so I can get the indicator to move. And there, you hear that? It will go all of a sudden. It doesn't move gradually. So there you can see we have a movement of 0 0.19 millimetres. With the new bolt now in place and some penetrating Loctite applied to the splines along here, I'm just going to give that some time to, to go off, probably a day or so, and then I'm going to mark the ends of the splines with some, um, some Tipex or some, some paint so that I can make sure that uh, they've not moved visually very easily. And I'll probably also mark the, the edge of the bolt here, just so that I can see whether that's backed out or not. 
I've now just put a bit of paint on the end of the splines. I've also marked the bolt, so if there's any movement on the bolt, I should be able to see that. I've also marked the back end of the bolt as well, just in case it that's where the engine happens to be when I take the cover off. So if there's any movement on the splines, I should easily be able to see that without having to disassemble everything to check it. With all the work done now on the flex plate, I'm going to put the exhaust back on. I shall be using new gaskets for it from Porsche. There's the part number on there. I'm going to put the exhaust back on. So obviously the two sides, I've got the bolts and nuts that came out. I'm going to put the exhaust back on before I cut, put the cover back on because I want to make sure I can get the cover off with the exhaust in place so that I don't need to refresh the exhaust gaskets every time I take it off. This will probably mean leaving these back two bolts out but the cover will still be held on with four you can see the other two on the side or I might just use shorter bolts on the back but anyway that's the next job so I'll, I'll get this exhaust reassembled cover is now back in place I've currently just put it in with these four bolts as I mentioned there is some room to possibly get two shorter ones in there so I, I may investigate doing that in the future but for now I'm just going to leave them out so there's the six bolts on the two exhaust flanges and then also the second rear injection so that needed tightening up so 24 millimeter and 27 millimeter i've also refitted the heat shields at the back so they're all now back in place so that's it job finished that's now all done and i shall check it again in a year's time when i change the oil